of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself proper unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As we are answering back Zachar Naik <coughs> and Sheikh Hamad Didat over the point of which many speculations have been arised, <coughs> not only by Zakir Naik, even in the past, many people who come to the point regarding the birth of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is called as incarnation. That is what we call in the hypostatic union, where they have been dealing in the previous step as well. The hypostatic union in which we can understand as a cornerstone, where with the Israel and the church, that is what the Israel, the dispensation of the Old Testament time of the Israel, and the dispensation of the new after the pre-canon period completion, which is post-canon, we have the church being combined to this center wall of the cornerstone. And not only this, many of the people, therewith they fail to realize the incarnation being deity in nature. But with Lord pictorically spoke to them during the period of his temple in the tabernacle showing forth with assessi wood overlaid with gold, they would have realized that the deity and the divinity of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in its perfect humanity, though not mixed with the attributes of his divine essence, he was true human and he was there only one person eligible, that is monegine in the Greek or what we call as only begotten to go up and die for you and for me on the cross as a substitute of spiritual death. Many of these claims which have been claimed by Zachary Reich in his dichotomy in nature who doesn't even realize what is the power of incarnation of my Lord in the hypostatic union and what is that great power experiment wherewith we have been perpetuated into this operational type of protocol plan of God wherewith Lord insisted and he was been tested to the more and he has been given the same power for us though we have been under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit we have been indwelled by the olds in nature and our soul which is our volition should be disciplined to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that whatsoever we read, we learn, we understand, we pray, we meditate, could be for a maximum glorification and the spiritual phenomena could be made very clear for us when we, in this trichotomous nature, be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, giving top priority for Bible doctrine and we need to test each and every doctrine what we get, is it in the form of the Bible doctrine or not, everyone who serves preaching in the pulpit, they're taking the words from the Bible itself and that preaching and interpreting their own translations with their own copies and their own understanding of the thoughts wherewith we do not dive with them with the original language of the scriptures in the Bible particularly the Hebrew, Greek and the Aramaic wherewith we want them to dive as per the word of the Lord demands from the original language of the scriptures and when they fail to understand this then such kind of a claims claimed by Zakir Naik or Sheikh Hamad Didad or any person whomsoever they call they are great in the sight of their own religion they think they have understood Bible and they can claim very easily that Lord was not crucified Christians have been fictionized and it is crucifixed but even they are not able to realize that my Lord is the only true one anthropomorph anthropomorphically appeared in the form of Trinity metamorphized becoming God to God man so that we the being in the slave market of sin could be released from the slave market of sin and we become dead to that old sin nature and be born again to this new nature which has been formed in true holiness and true righteousness that's what Ephesians 4 24 says but we have to tell it in true righteousness of true Bible doctrine that is this aletheia in the Greek and this is what many people fail to realize the incarnation and we have many speculations raised in that incarnation and even as such we have many speculations regarding the crucifixion of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as well and these people like Sheikh Hamad Didat or Zakir Naik who think by keeping a moron pastor who is reckless arrogant or senseless extravagant to the core who does not even realize what is trichotomous in nature and what is the spiritual phenomena to be understood and what is it that we have not to grieve the spirit or squelch the spirit but rather be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to understand this truth this Pastor Rakhidin who was there to be debated he would have told to them very clearly the seven phrases of my Lord which he spoke on the cross and each and every phrase are so important 
to provide salvation for each and every member of the human race, whosoever is born into the slave market of sin through the meiosis of male and meiosis of female, wherewith the 23 chromosomes of male are been copulated or been fertilized by these 23 chromosomes of a male sperm, wherewith we have been taken into consideration, the man passes down the sin nature towards that womb, and this sin nature is what it makes us the imputation of our Lord during our first birth, which is birth one, which we call physically alive and being spiritually dead. Because Adam's original sin has to be imputed to each and every member of the human race, irrespective of male and female, to be born to this human world, wherewith we call that he has been born with the divine imputation of the soul, which is immortal at the moment of his physical birth, and this divine imputation of the soul will be taken back into consideration and be judged and taken and be put for him Adam's original sin, wherewith it has been termed that God's righteousness and God's justice, that is his integrity, that is his essence box, will be totally satisfied only when we know very well that the Adam's original sin has been credited to him. And that Adam's original sin says in the essence box, what the righteousness demands? Death. That's why we have been spiritually dead and we have been termed as dichotomous in nature. Though we are physically alive, we are spiritually dead. And this is what we have to transform ourselves by by building upon the Lord Jesus Christ and what we have to become, we have to become trichotomous. But this was not the case of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why he has been told of the virgin birth, wherewith he has been born, the 23 chromosomes supplied by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith we take into consideration of those things, the man's sperms or the man's 23 chromosomes were not been given, but it is the instantaneous supply of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith he has been born into not the slave market of sin, but into the royal family of God, wherewith he has been born under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why he, not, he doesn't require rebound, nor he doesn't require to be occupied with Christ, because Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwelt with him at the moment of his physical birth itself. And that's the Mone Gine, wherewith many people fail to realize and understand that simple truth, wherewith his virgin birth, even Quran states about his virgin birth, and the whole chapter has been dedicated to Mary Mother, that's what they call, because of the things what Lord has performed, and that is what it is an absolute fact. And this 23 chromosomes which have been supplied by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that's what it has been called as overshadowed. And this 23 chromosomes wherewith Lord used the flesh to take from a woman, because to die on the cross and to give a substitute sacrifice for you and for me, and that's the crucifixion. And in these seven phrases, we have very clear depth of understanding what he did, how he did. And when Pastor Rockerdin would have been prepared, he would have told to Zakir Naik that you being born to a human being, you have a dichotomy in nature. You do not have the trichotomous in nature. Even we who have been born to the human do not have the trichotomous in nature. But how can we become trichotomous by believing upon the Lord as told in John chapter 3 wherein they have been told to Nicodemus the religion leader studying to the fact when he came in the night he told to him until unless you have been born in water and spirit you cannot look into the kingdom of God what is that water gospel what is that spirit indwelling controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which can control your activated human spirit that is what at the moment of your salvation by faith alone in Christ alone when you express your positive volition to believe upon the Lord it is Lord God the Holy Spirit who imputes that eternal life by creating this human spirit in you which was dormant and it makes to be activated because originally when God created man he was trichotomous in nature and that's what we have in Genesis 2 stating to the fact if you eat that fruit dying you shall die that's what the original Hebrew says we did not look into the translation we did not look into the copies wherewith we have erroneous conclusions drawn and many of the people which debate for this incarnation or for the crucifixion or for the resurrection which has to be the third point because when we consider the three things of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ very clearly as per the light of the virgin language of the scriptures the concept is so clear even for a moron to understand far less this person calls himself as Dr. Zakir Naik can easily understand it and Pastor Rakudin a failure on his part to prepare very well because until and unless we test the doctrine which has been taught for you whether it is the doctrine of the true kenosis or false kenosis whether it's the doctrine of the crucifixion of my Lord and the conclusion of the verses what you take from the gospels wherewith you have a clear count 
wealth of information wherewith seven phrases which my Lord spoke, wherewith we have been emphasizing on the fifth phrase, which is I thirst. And this emphasis of the fifth phrase, why is so long? Why I have been teaching all these things in the tapes? Because the fifth phrase shows the entire humanity of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being given to one concept known as Bible doctrine. He centered his entire humanity right from the beginning of his ministry when he was being tempted by Satan to make the stones into bread and to eat. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Wherewith we have a clear cut of information that we, the human believers, wherewith we believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, also should make our life to be dependent upon Bible doctrine. The faith wherewith we look, the faith wherewith we understand, the faith where we have the true desire upon the Lord, wherewith we know Lord sustains us, Lord is the one who provides for us, Lord is the one who is going to reign through us, Lord is the one who should be glorified through us. How is it possible until and unless you listen to a faithful pastor teacher who is able to teach you the accurate exegesis of doctrine so that what you do from this exegesis of doctrine, you believe it by faith, you accept it by faith and you grow up, you feed upon that and you show forth your way where with you can defend such kind of a debates easily and tell to them, it is my Lord that alone shall reign forever and forever. And any blasphemous talk regarding my Lord, we shall not tolerate it. For example, if you look back into the centuries of our history, when Nero was there in the first century AD, the way he was a tyrant, how Lord cleared him out, we know very well. The same thing when we look back during the period of the Plymouth Brethren, when his father was a great preacher, but his son, who has been called as Alistair Crowley, who turned out to be greatest cult of all time and the cult of book what he has been written known as Thelema and wherewith till in Amazon.com we find this book written, the book of lives which has been easily supplied to so many cultish people, wherewith they find their pleasure in sexual orgasm, wherewith they consider that this is the way what we have to survive, how the things have been up and out, the way when his father was a great preacher preaching in the streets of the pulpit in the England and saying to them this is what if you do not believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ you have to face eternal hell but his same son, though he attended the same things, he turned out to be a person of a cult ruled by Satan, so that his mind has been totally blocked with the satanic cults, the teachings of Satan, wherewith he was not able to discern the truth, why and what went wrong. The wrong on the failure part of the father, or the wrong on the failure part of the child to take the negative decision. God knows what went wrong. But we are to tell, until unless you have that strong desire by faith to listen to a pastor teacher, what is teaching from the exegesis is right, and you take it from the original language of the scriptures, no doubt what foundation you have, whether it may be brethren or limit brethren, or the person whosoever has been editor of the Bible treasury, or anything what you have, until and unless you have that faith to take it and dig in and you have that positive volition to make your volition straight because Lord has told very clearly these things of revealed information will be given only to those persons who have the desire to learn and to look into that truth and that will be revealed by God the Father to the Son and God the Son will reveal that only to the person who has that intention to learn this Bible doctrine and that intention can never be taken if we do not have faith if you do not have that faith to understand, which is a non-meritorious system of perception through the right pastor teacher who teaches you the doctrine, digged like a drudge from the virgin language of the scriptures, wherewith the account of information given for us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 says to us, right from the childhood you have been given this doctrine of salvation so that you can become wise, so that all scripture which has been given for you is God-breathed, it is theonistos. And have you take it, that theonistos in the virgin language of the scriptures, not in the translation not in the copied versions, not in the XYZ. That's why a minister has been told, if you are a pastor teacher, the responsibility kept up on your shoulder is to learn the original language of the scriptures, or in fact, even go to the ISA, Internal Scripture for All, which analyzes the word in English as well as in the Greek, English as well as in the Hebrew. Get back to them and look into the lexicons, make a thorough study of that, make each and every word into your concordance and look, and the dictionary meaning of that, if you have the, the theological dictionaries of the Hebrew, which has been written and headed by 
Gesenius or if you have the Benjamin or if you have anyone B2B, that's what we have been called, Bridges, Driver, Brown, and all these things, lexicons of the Hebrew. Or if you come back to the Greek, you have the Kittel, Gerhard, and Friedrich, the 10 dictionaries, volumes, wherewith you have each and every word exemplified, even the history covering from the other medieval times or Middle Ages, even as such in the first century, even as such in second century practices, or even if you have Walter Bauer, the great lexicon of all time, or Adrant and Gingrich, where when you have this information, you take each and every word and learn it if you cannot understand the language of Hebrew and Greek, but make a study until unless you make a study and get a thorough conclusion because you are answerable to God for each and every word you speak. And if you fail to do it, you are a failure in the sight of the Lord. So what went wrong with his son who raised cultism to the maximum and in the put to put an end what Lord raised? Lord raised Mussolini coming out from the Italian. He totally destroyed this person and he even took control of the England. This is what how Lord will raise his people. He knows very well even after the defeat of Germany in 1991-1919, the First World War, wherewith the people couldn't have anything to think of but except to follow themselves and indulge in such kind of a orgy practice of sexual lust that they went on to show forth that all these things of homosexualism practiced by the Jews, the writings given by them, the way they have been taken into consideration, but what, how and where God raised, God raised the leader known as Hitler of all time. He raised and he vanished off to put them into a proper order wherewith they could change their thinking and come back and give the top priority to normal life far less they think they can give and top priority for the Bible teaching. That would have been taken place in the Plymouth Brethren and the Plymouth Brethren would have taken them and put this person to an end and given the teachings to the core wherewith we find in today's Christendom of apostate period England also doesn't exegete the world. The, the word in the 18th century we had exegesis by 1875 the man who has been raised to the core though we have some great people rising from that England we couldn't have such a kind of a record as William Carey had as William Kelly had or as even such the C.H. McIntosh the writings written by them they have the weight still today what they have they have not been there given the same period of the England what we see into the history because of one crooked son who was cultic to the core and who wrote the book known as Thalema. How is it we all going to put an end? God knows how to put them to an end by rising his mind to fill up the gap. Even as Zachariah is rising today to show forth that blasphemy towards my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God knows whom and where to rise and to put an end to him. But only when he can rise them, only when they are prepared, when they are being mentally given, because it is Lord who works through you, only when you give your own will, soul, spirit and heart to understand his word because of his pain that is happening in today's Christendom. In today's Christendom we have these apostate leaders more worse than that sexual origins which took place in the 19th century or right from the first century of the Nero or in the 19th and 19th of the World War I. All these people who were so bad even in the 1900 of USA what we have the Theodore Roosevelt the US president the way he went to put out this all prostitution in the New York City, the way how you raised, the way how you has been taken so that he could properly order them into one work. How the way Satan tries to attack, but how God rises our leader there and therewith the people put them to an end and he puts Bible doctrine again back to number one priority so that they can live a normal life, a normal life of a normal human being, not to be indulged like the Sodom and Gomorrahites where the people have been taking to their pleasure to fulfill their lust, not according to the law wherewith they are going according out of the law, calling lesbianism or even as such bestiality or even as such homosexuality. How Lord will put to an end? Only when Lord rises a faithful minister in that era. The same place where in the New York, where we have in the USA, the same theological seminary rising known as Dallas Theological Seminary, headed by Lewis Perry Chaffer, which has become a hub once again to preach the word of truth. Again, we have the one 
and the only person, Robert Bunker, teammate, teaching to us the exegesis, categorical, isogical background of the subject, so that once again we can hold back to that kingdom of the word of the Lord and show forth and test each and every doctrine under that light. But whereas in the England, we had the greatest preachers of all times, but from the 18th century or from the 19th century, we did not even hear great preachers from England. The same thing even in Germany. The German Bibles are so well translated, even as such, in their languages from the original Hebrew and Greek, their account to the act accurate information, but we do not have any persons today who can preach as a German missionary or a German exegetical teacher, but USA is still standing. Why and where? Because USA is a client nation to God, and God can easily remove that client nation when there is no pivot. The pivot is a group of members of mature believers in Bible doctrine, wherewith they perpetuate the word, wherewith for them Bible doctrine is more than the physical breath they take and the physical food they take. And irrespective of any geographical location in this entire universe, if you desire to learn the truth, it is the duty and work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to provide you that information only when you are faithfully prepared to take in that word and faithfully stick to the Bible doctrine taught to you by a right pastor teacher who teaches you from the exegetical, categorical, and isagogical background preparation of the subject. And until and unless you be prepared from him, you cannot get into such kind of a debates. You cannot be prepared into such kind of a debates. Far less you think you have understood the doctrine. Far less you think you can teach the doctrine. Far less you think you are there in the pulpit to handle the doctrine and show forth the things wherewith it is not at all possible. But I ask only one plea, because when this person first he claimed about the incarnation, Zakir Naik, and then he claims about the crucifixion, but he doesn't even know what is the resurrection of my Lord, and that the pattern of the Gospels wherewith they teach to us very clearly. First his incarnation, then his crucifixion, and then his resurrection. But many of the people fail to realize this inspired volume, which is Bible doctrine, which carries its own credentials with it. It speaks for itself. It comes to us with an overwhelming body of evidence, both internal and external, wherewith we have been given the words of the traditions in 1 Corinthians 11:2, a failure of the traditions or directions wherewith the apostle does not specify what they were, but we thank God. We know that whatever ordinances, traditions, or directions are essential for the church to the end of time are clearly laid down in the scriptures of the New Testament, particularly in John chapter 1, verse 18, wherewith it has been told to us, exegiomai, that is, exegete the word. If you are not exegeting, you do not have the tradition, you do not have the direction, nor you do not have the ordinances for your church to be carried out. We have been told in John 1.18 to exegeomai, to exegete the word, to exegete what you require, the original language of the scriptures is that you require. If you do not know the exegesis is the order of the day to take from the original language of the scriptures and to teach, then your ministry and your traditions or your ordinances is not in accord with the word of the Lord. This is quite enough for us as told in First John in John 1.18. Men have no authority, whatever to set up rites and ceremonies in the church of God, their doing so can only be regarded by every heart loyal to Christ as a daring assumption of his authority, which he will most assuredly judge before long. We feel increasingly Im impressed with the sense of the urgent need of testing everything by the word of Lord and of rejecting whatever cannot stand the test. That is what only exegesis can test whether the doctrine taught in the pulpits is right or wrong. If the doctrine which has been taught, if it cannot stand with the original language of the scriptures, then it is not fit for them to be preached. It is not only deeply sorrowful, but, but most Solomon to mark the way in which the authority of Christ has laid down in his precious word is virtually set aside by those who profess to be his people and his servants. That is what it is really going wrong in today's Christendom. People, they call themselves as stewards. People call themselves as servants. People call themselves as Lord's priests. But they are not at all really Lord's priests. These are the men who have come to devour the flock. These are the men who do not give top priority for Bible doctrine. These are the men that do not know the importance of Bible doctrine. They, these are the men that do not even know exegesis to preach in the pulpit as to be the ordinances and traditions of Bible doctrine, but rather they come and replace with emotion. They want to come and attract the crowd for their dirty lusts to be fulfilled because we find the origins in the first century practiced by Nero, but these people are more worse than that Nero because though he was a tyrant, but these people knowingly they are tyrant worse to the core because to fulfill their lusts, they are using this defunct and deceptive gift of false teachings wherewith they have been 
considering themselves, though the pre-canon period gifts have been totally seized, they are taking into their life and call. They are still in existence. So what we have to do, we have to follow these gifts, and we want to make them the believer who is coming to my church. If he is not having the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he is not worth because he doesn't speak in tongues. This is what they are being used blasphemously because the people, they do not even realize what is the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and what is the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is a permanent one, which is baptism, and which is a temporary one, which is filling. Wherewith, when we sin, filling goes, but by rebound, we get back. Wherewith, it is a constant command to be always imperative mode, so that we should be always filled of the Spirit, always, always filled of the Spirit. And if you're not being always filled of the Spirit, you are going to yield to the lust of this flesh. So that's what they say, but they call yielding to the lust of the flesh as being Satan controlling you. And they say, if you're doing doing good, like moral enough, good enough, or antinomianism, that's what the people call, wherewith they think only salvation is enough, and in this salvation, what we do is not respective for us, and what we are going on practicing is what all those things that they're going to do, that is not at all right in the sight of the Lord, because all these things, what we are going to do, because after salvation, what we have to do, we have to grow up in Bible doctrine, and when you know and love the Lord, you will keep His commandments, and His commandments says for you what to do and what not to do. If you fail to follow that very clearly, then you are a Failure more worst than a honest man who calls in a religion himself that is trying to become honest, but he is no more worth to be called as even as a honest man, far less he could be called as a Christian integrity virtue person wherewith he has been designed to produce virtue and not wise. So what you're going to take, it is left to you. So every word what you take into consideration has to be taken under the light of the word of the Lord. That's why we have been telling the importance of the fifth phrase wherewith the people fail to give knowledge about dispensations and that knowledge failure to learn dispensation makes them a failure not to discern what is theocentric, what is Christocentric, and what is eschatological events. When they fail to discern the word as per Bible doctrine demands, then there is a failure for them not able to realize and to learn the importance of this truth. When they are failures not able to realize and to learn this importance of Bible truth, then what happens? They are easily laying aside the authority of Christ, and they are keeping his precious word as virtually virtually set aside by those who profess to be his people and his servants. That is what it is happening in today's Christendom. It never seems to occur to those pastors who are occupying the pulpits without exegesis that they are really responsible before God to judge by the light of his word the various things in which they are engaged. If you are not being engaged in your pulpit without exegesis, brethren, kindly come to notice to recall for yourself that you are answerable before God and whatsoever you do, you are there in the light of his word to be told before the judgment seat of Christ, why and what have you weigh, in which manner you have devoured the flock. Hence they go on from week to week and year to year with the whole host of things, having not a shadow of foundation in Holy Scripture. If Bible doctrine is not being taught for you from the original language of the Scriptures, no matter how well you think you are going week to week or from month to month or from year to year, you think that whatsoever you are performing in your ritual act of the church that you are not even having a sure foundation in holy scriptures but rather you are just wasting your time and yielding those where you do not sow it is as simple as sowing to the wind and you're reaping war wind but you think you are sowing a seed in the field but it is just as good as a barren land wherewith you have not tilted that soil nor you have been tempered with a good temper of mud of soil to the wall, but you have been tempered with untempered mortar, and you have been sowed into this yield of a land wherewith it is not been tilted at all. That is what you have to make it sure, because no matter you may be preaching from week to week, or even in the Wednesday sermons, or even in the Friday sermons, or you may be considering the whole host of things, because you have been doing it from year to year, or you have been into the church for eight years to ten years, but if you are not teaching the ordinances, or the practices, or the traditions wherewith you have been called to do in the pulpit, that is to exegeomai, which has been clearly 
clearly laid down for us in John 1.18. That is what Lord has told. No man has seen God at any time, but it is the only begotten Son who has come from the bosom of the Father has expounded it to us. And how he has expounded it to us? Through exegesis. That is the Greek word by which we have a derivation known as exegeomai. And if you do not have this exegeomai, whatsoever you are doing is not at all right in the sight of the Lord. No matter, you may put the whole host of things, but you do not even have a shot of foundation in the Holy Scriptures. How appealing it is or appealed to think of the end of all this. It will not be with the scrooge of small cards that all these things will be driven out of the temple because Lord used to driven them out because it was a house of prayer, but they made it a house of den of thieves. Exactly the church, which is to be house of exegetical word, ground and pillar of truth, even doctrine, wherein the pulpit teaches the manifold wisdom of God, as told in Ephesians 3.10, wherewith even the pulpits, what they are preaching, the fallen angels are rubbernecking to lick to understand to the angels, where we teach to them what exactly the preacher is teaching, but this have been made a house of an emotionalism, wherewith Satan being blinded, this pastor teaches mind not able to make them to realize the importance of Bible doctrine. The Satan which has shut their eyes or blinded their eyes with emotionalism, with the deception and defunct use of false teachings, not able to make them to realize the accurate dispensations, but rather teaching them false dispensations and training them in a way wherewith they think still there is an existence of apostleship or, or prophets or teaching or wisdom or X, Y, Z, or all these things which were there in the pre-canon period are still in force. That's why we jump around, we dance around, we speak gibberishly in our emotion. And that's why we have this power of miracles. We have the power of healings. And we are showing forth all these things has been replaced. The church, wherewith the church should be called the pulpit of exegeomai, as in the case of my Lord while he was alive in this incarnation of his hypostatic union. He threw out those people and said, the house of my Lord is called as the house of a prayer but you have made it a house of den of thieves. That's what exact replica of today's Christian apostasy where within today's Christendom the church which has to be a place of manifold wisdom of God exegeting the word of the truth because church is a ground and pillar of truth and the church wherewith the angels also desire to learn Bible doctrine is being replaced with the house of emotion, house of pre canon and false deception, defunct use of spiritual gifts, house of apostate leaders wherewith they attract crowds for their money, and house of a period wherewith the, wherewith the followers of the believers have been made to give place for the sake of alluring them to false doctrines and false priorities in their lives and making them a church of a place of social clubs, social interaction groups, and even rising them to the core, not able to give a proper manner of Christian way of life, but rather teaching them as a Christian way of life, doing good deeds, to become like a honest person, to become like a moral person, but a Christian believer who is positionally adult in the form of spiritual realm is being designed for virtue and not for are wise because morality and the honest nature what the religions follow is not at all close to Christianity. Christianity is what we have been called to show for the virtue derived from the integrity taught by a right pastor teacher from the virgin language of the scriptures, digging to form you to realize, to keep the commandments of the Lord and to have that undying devotedness of love towards Bible doctrine that whatsoever come may we stick on to Bible truth if you do not stick on to Bible truth then it is as simple as that you have to face the decision of the judgment seat of Christ wherewith Lord will judge you with the cards as he judged in the temple because his temple his Shekinah glory is each and every believer and in each and every believer the fragments of aroma has to be burnt like an fire which will never quench out as told in Leviticus 6.13 and that fire can never be squelched out until and unless you have Bible doctrine to be put upon that altar to be burnt and until and unless you derive that Bible doctrine from the original language of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, no doubt it is for sure that you are having pseudo flame but not the real flame of my Lord. So how appealing to think of the end of all this it will not be with the scrooge of small cards that 
all these things will be driven out of the temple. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, arose by his mighty ministry, the whole church to a profound sense of supreme authority and all sufficiency of the Holy Scriptures. We have to stand to that absolute authority and supreme sufficiency which could be given to us only by the Holy Scriptures. So I request the Lord's dear people be kept from the spirit of this age where within the spirit of this age the false liar that is what satan has been ruling which had an attack right from the beginning of the 15th century so that each and every pulpit not to preach exegesis but make them a transformation from exegesis to all such kind of a sheer out of practices of the historical acts or the gospels wherewith in the pre-canon period which were evident for them to show forth the sign of messiah for my lord jesus christ to show for the sign of apostleship for the apostles but in the new period after the post canon period we have been given the mystery doctrine of the church age and one jackass he tells in his pulpit that there is no difference between Ephesians and Colossians. It is as simple as the words have been written and changed and sent. What the hell does he know about the Ephesians and what the hell does he know about the Colossians? Because Ephesians speaks about the first three chapters, the divinely realm to the praise of his glory in his grace, which Lord has written for us to show forth the heavenly blessings and the importance of which by grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone, how we have been saved and why the church has been called the manifold wisdom of God and why the Christ is called as a cornerstone and the practical living, the divine gifts given to each and every believer after the post canon period, which is pastor, teacher, the number one gift, number two evangelist, the administration and the helps wherewith you have been told to live off your old sin nature. Do not live in the vanity of this old sin mind, but rather look on and transform to the righteousness and this aletheia, which is not in holiness, but in Bible doctrine. And then the mystery of the church wherewith we have been given the copulation between the marriage of a wife and husband how exactly it has to be between the marriage of the church and the mystery doctrine towards Christ how is it how the marriage is so beautiful in the sight of the Lord and how the beautiful his marriage will be for us when we obey and the Ephesians number six it talks about the spiritual warfare but what you have in the Colossians you have the ministerial duty given to you for a right pastor teacher the burden laid out upon you how you have to do and what is the true doctrine of kenosis how Lord has made this invisible creature which is Lord Jesus Christ into the sight of a realm so that we could understand the firstborn of all the things of all sin nature out but being born in the spirit in the power of the spirit of Lord God the Holy Spirit and what exactly we have in the Colossians chapter 2 to show forth what we are in Christ to show forth in three what exactly the things of the look of the above and how we have been to reform reschedule into the e icon of the Greek wherewith Lord has created for us in the original realm of his intention wherewith in his original spirit what we have to do and in the fourth we have the things which have been contained to obey parents to the children and how we have to sustain in the doctrinal ministry this is a lot of difference between Ephesians and Colossians it is not the same exact Raklipa and this is what the people of today's Christendom are trying to understand it is just a mere difference of the words but both the epistles are the same what a sheer out of a blasphemy it is. When you go back and look in the original language of the scriptures, you will find so hard it is for each and every word to discern and to teach for you in your pulpits, far less you take any translation and tell that these both are the same. And you call as yourself a great preacher. Whom you are kidding with? You are kidding with your own congregation who is listening to you. But when you look back into the original language of the scriptures, you will have that white edge, what exactly it is. And these people, some of the jackasses they call, that if they go to their temple, that's what they call, the unbelieving husband and the believing wife, even she wanted to follow the practices of her unbelieving husband. And she came to the temple, she changed her mind. And that's a great testimony. And now she's coming to the temple. She's allowing his children to come. And even the husband is trying to come by changing his attitude. First and foremost, Bible never asks us to marry an unbeliever. And if you marry an unbeliever, you are far gone to the glory of the Lord. Though you marry an unbeliever, you have to have a tough time being equally yoked with a cat and a donkey to be put together because a spiritually dead person that is this Dr. Zakir Nayak 
and the spiritually alive person, Pastor Rocketin, both come back to the same course of life to sustain together, and you know they won't, they don't, they both don't agree at a point because they don't go together until and unless they have agreed to do so. That's exactly a marriage between a believer and unbeliever. And this temple guy, he says that they came to my temple and they've been changed and they're doing right. How long will you think that this testimony will stand forth? If you teach on with your moral stories, which are just like the Cartoon Network stories, what we watch in the TVs, and you think you have been doing right ministry into the temples, do not kid. Christianity and preaching is not cartoon stories, what we watch in the Cartoon Network. It is reality. If you do not find the difference between Ephesians and Colossians from the original language of the scriptures, then you are a fool to find it in the translations. Because the word of the Lord written for you in the original Greek has that depth of information wherewith it will take for you years to preach. Only on the book of Ephesians, far less you think you can come and preach the book of Colossians and you tell in your pulpit saying that there is no difference except a change of words. Go back and look to the exegeomai of the word. And this testimony, what these false preachers are teaching, they think the moral part of Ephesians, the moral part of Colossians is enough for them to preach the word. And if that is the fate in today's Christendom, what will be the fate if they are easily following the Pentecostal or charismatic movement? But we have the whole church to a more profound sense of the supreme authority and all sufficiency of the Holy Scriptures so that you can judge and test each and every doctrine from the original language of the Scriptures so that you can understand what exactly is the word and what exactly is the spirit of this age if this world known as Satan is trying to confound and confuse you by not giving to you top priority for Bible doctrine. We want you to cultivate a truly humble, contrite spirit wherewith a spirit of lowly obedience, a spirit which will lead us to bow down with unreserved submission to the authority of Holy Scripture. That's why you have been told not to grieve, not to squelch, but rather be controlled of the spirit, be walking of the spirit so that your trading manner being under the control of the spirit which by using rebound which is 1 John 1 9 looking into the subject of the concept wherewith you can learn the truth and the truth shall set you free if you're not into that concept of the subject of Bible doctrine whatever you're doing is just like a sheer rut so we want us you to be reserved submission to the authority of Holy Scripture. It is written in a sentence of commanding power. It is a sentence uttered by our blessed Lord and master of the opening of his public career and referring to it again and again in the course of his marvelous ministry that the word of the Lord, even in the dying crucifixion of my Lord, he was giving and centering his entire humanity upon Bible doctrine. It was reiterated with solemn emphasis to his disciple as he was about to pass into heavens. May this weighty sentence be engraved on the tablets of our hearts that Bible doctrine to be given top priority in the way what we are. If you are asked to state what we consider to be the one grand need of the day in which our lot is cast, we would say without hesitation we want to give the word of the Lord its true place as the basis of our individual peace and the soul and all sufficient authority for our individual Heart. And that word of God taught from the original language of the scriptures must take its true place, the true place in the pulpit to exegeomai, to categorize and to isogoch from the original languages of the scripture. So let us unite, beloved brethren, in earnest prayer to our God that he will give us grace so to do to the praise of his glory in his grace. And by introduction being so long, we are here to look the dispensational concept of the subject and why I have been told today regarding these things so that you might understand and listen and discern what you are reading, what you are hearing, what you are listening is right in the original languages of the scripture or not. Do not follow such kind of a false cult because Lord is very faithful enough to give this information only to those who have that positive volition to stick on to the integrity of Bible doctrine. If you do not do the stick on to the integrity of Bible doctrine and if you replace that doctrine, it is as simple as that what we have been told. Pastor Rocketin and Zachary Nayak being dichotomous and trichotomous in nature, 
trying to cope their entire life as a wife and husband, which is not at all possible for them. That exactly is the matter of ma in the matter in ministry of pulpit today. That you want your things to be combined. It is as good as dichotomous in nature. And what trichotomous demands, the Holy Spirit demands that you teach exegesis. If the pulpit is not preaching exegesis, how it can have analogy or fellowship with the dichotomy person that is your following sure out of theology. These both cannot jibe together and they cannot agree at one point. Until unless they agree, they cannot be together. That's what Amos 3.2 says. So what we are here, we are here to tell both should agree at the same point. The party and the receiver and the giver, if they are not agreeing at the same point, the giver is Lord Jesus Christ through a right pastor teacher. The receiver is the recipient in the pew and the one who is the party, the party is that we both get together so that you, by having a positive volition, you can learn the word of truth derived diligently from the original languages of the scriptures, which is Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. If a pastor teacher is not pre preaching to you that exegesis in the pulpit, then just forget it. Because week by week may pass, month by month may pass, year by year may pass but you do not even have a foundation in the Holy Scripture. So where you are, what you are, correct yourself. If you have the gift of pastor teacher, which is bona fide to be given to you by the head of the church, which is Lord Jesus Christ, given only to a male believer, then your duty for you is to be faithfully prepared. Do not gimmick with the things what you're practicing. Do not follow the things wherewith you're thinking you are right, but make sure that you have a right and true fellowship with the Lord. And to have a right and true fellowship with the Lord is not to follow the translations or the versions or the copies, because man is having that capability well enough instituted in his brain that he has such kind of a million trillion cells of neurons that he can change his mind to learn any language. He can change his thought to learn any degree. And he can grow up to glorify to my to maximum my Lord Jesus Christ by learning the original language of the scriptures only taught by him when he has that burden kept upon his shoulders to glorify my Lord to the maximum. And as we have been given yesterday, the definition of other dispensations followed with the Christ, the cornerstone. Today we shall look from the Christocentric dispensation point of view, the separation of Israel and the church and the fulfillment of the Mosaic law followed, if time permits, the law of Christ. Wherewith we can understand these things in depth only when we are under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we have the word of prayer and come back and look into the priesthood of our privacy because for a trichotomous person it is a mandate to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that we can have that concentration to learn the truth and the truth shall set us free so in the privacy of your soul we shall have a word of prayer and come back and look into the subject we are graciously thankful Heavenly Father for the privilege that are given to us to our fellowship with you through thy word Father, we pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things, particularly the things that have been spoken now and the things that we are, with, we are been teaching them now in the Christian-centric dispensations. As Father Christ, the cornerstone, has given us the things we are, with, we are capable of understanding your word only through the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. If it were not the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have done anything. But Father, we thank thee for thy grace on this ordinary believer who is so gentile, so reckless, so arrogant, so extravagant, but you have given us your grace so that we can understand thy truth and stand forth for thy truth. So, Father, we ask that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in the things that we are going to study, the fulfillment of the Mosaic law, which my Lord did on the cross, so that even Zachary Naik or any religion person of the Jews listening to this tape could able to understand this Bible doctrine, the depth of it, and make it a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So in the Christocentric dispensation, we have the separation of Israel and the church. We have the fulfillment of the Mosaic law. Yesterday we have seen Christ the cornerstone. The dispensation of the hypostatic union stands as a line of demarcation between Israel and the church. Christ fulfilled the Mosaic law on one hand and set the precedent for church age protocol on the other. This division is confirmed by numerous passages which state that the Mosaic law does not define the Christian's way of life. As told in John 1, 16 through 17, Acts 15, 5 through 11 and 24, Romans 6, 14, Romans 7, 4 through 6, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 17, Galatians 2, 9, Galatians 3, 19 through 25, Galatians 5, 18, 
Ephesians 2.15 and Colossians 2.14. At the Exodus, God founded Israel as a theocracy ruled personally by the second person of the Trinity. The whole thrust of the Jewish way of life was spiritual. Because God ruled Israel, every aspect of life in the nation had spiritual significance. And the Mosaic law did not distinguish between spiritual and secular issues. Obedience to divine establishment was part of the spiritual life of Jewish believers. And observance of holy days and animal sacrifices was required of all citizens, including unbelievers. Although these rituals were fully meaningful to believers only, we distinguish the Freedom Code, the Spiritual Code, and the Establishment Code as a categorical approach to communicate the wide scope of Mosaic Law. But all aspects of the law add up to one code for a unique political entity with a spiritual origin, a spiritual destiny, and a king who is God himself. The law is an integrated whole, as told in Matthew 5.18, Galatians 5.14. The entire Mosaic law is a particular expression of God's eternal and holy character, as told in Exodus 19. He gave the law to a distinctly defined people or group of people, Exodus 19.3, Leviticus 26.46, Romans 2.17-20, Romans 3.19, Romans 9.4. It was effective for a limited period of time, as told in Galatians 3.23-25, and it was designed for several explicit purposes. The Mosaic Law regulated life in God's unique client nation, exposed man's sinfulness, and demonstrated his need of a Savior. But the primary purpose of the law was to anticipate the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As told in Matthew 5.17, Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did come to abolish but to fulfill it. The law I did not come to abolish but to fulfill it. The law was far more than simply a rule of behavior. Although superior, superior to contemporary codes in its moral instruction, the law was not primarily ethical but messianic. Therein lies its true greatness. It, its mandates depicted the person and work of Christ and protected the line of Christ until he would arrive in the flesh. The centuries-old purpose of the Mosaic Law was achieved by the incarnate Lord Jesus Christ. Anticipation was replaced by reality. This perfect fulfillment is a tribute to the faithfulness of God. Because all parts of the law function together as one code, the law has been abrogated as a whole. The entirety of the law is no longer pertinent and no longer governs any people or nation, as told in Matthew 5, 17 through 19, Romans 10, 4, Galatians 3, 23 through 25, Galatians 5, 3 to 4, in comparison with Galatians 5, 18, Hebrews 8, 13, and Hebrews 10, 9. The regime of the Mosaic law has ended. The church is not under law, but under grace, as told in Romans 6, 14. And these things Zachir Naik has to understand before he could preach the thoughts of the Ezekiel chapter 18, where with he thinks he can understand the law very clearly and is able to realize. Christ fulfilled the law. He did not come to abolish, but he came to fulfill. And we, the church, are not under law, but under grace. A very clear instrument of the law of Christ, wherewith the end of Mosaic law does not leave believers or unbelievers lawless, as told in Romans 6.15 or Romans 13, 1-7. A new code of divine mandates, which also expresses the essence of God, now defines the believer's way of life. Like the law, this new code is also an integrated whole, but God's protocol plan for the church has different objective, to glorify the victorious Christ to the maximum. The protocol plan accompanies a different array of divine blessings for the believer that are surveyed in the second half of, of this, and the protocol plan of God has a different thirst, greater responsibility placed upon each believer to think and apply Bible doctrine for himself in the privacy of his own priesthood. Many principles found in the Mosaic Law also appear in the protocol plan. The reason is that both codes come from the same source, from God himself. God is not a contradictory to say once and to change it, but he says we are not lawless, but we are under a new law, a new law wherewith you have been told not to grieve the spirit, not to squelch the spirit, but rather be controlled of the spirit. When you are under the trading power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you know which way and how to gather yourself to the character of God, because it remains unchanged even as he made dispensational changes in human history. He was perfect before he gave law to Moses, perfect during the tenure of the law, 
perfect when he fulfilled and rescinded the law to Christ. In fact, the succession of dispensations reveals his changeless essence to man and angels. God expressed his absolute holiness to man in legal terms long before the Mosaic law existed, and he continues to provide ethical norms and spiritual instruction now that the law has ceased to govern. Indeed, before during and after the time in which the Mosaic law was in effect in Israel, other expressions of divine law functioned among Gentiles to whom the Mosaic law never applied, as told in Genesis 26.5, Exodus 19.5, Romans 2.14-16, 1 Corinthians 7.19, and 1 Corinthians 9.20-21. In the church age, the operative divine law is not the Mosaic law, but the law of Christ, as told in 1 Corinthians 9.20-21, and Galatians 6.2. This also is called the law of the spirit of life in Lord Jesus Christ, as told in Romans 8.2, which we designate as a protocol plan of God, are the life in the divine dinosphere. Christ fulfilled the entire Mosaic law in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the prototype divine dinosphere. The church age believer obeys the new law of Christ by following his precedent, filling with the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the operational divine dinosphere, as told in Romans 8, 2 through 4. Because Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled and abrogated the Mosaic law, as told in Hebrews 8, 13 and 10, 9, practices instituted for the nation of Israel are not included in the post-salvation plan of God for the church age. They do not contribute to the Christian way of life. The church, for example, does not offer animal sacrifices, observe holy days or the Sabbath, maintain the Levitical priesthood, worship in a sacred building, offer tithes, or have minute details of civic life prescribed by spiritual ordinances. There is now a new universal priesthood for all believers, as told in 1 Peter 2.9, Hebrews 7.12, Hebrews 8.1, a great emphasis on individual responsibility, Galatians 5.1, and the separation of church from the state, as told in Romans 13.1-7, in comparison with Matthew 22. 15 through 22 and this is what we have been told the law of Christ wherewith we are being given that greater privilege because all those things of sacrifices or tithes were short of Christianity Christology thought to them, when the reality comes, the ritualism will be faded off. And the ritualism has been totally erased. But what we have now, we have faith alone in Christ alone. And every believer being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as a power so that he can reside and grow and claim the victorious proclamation of my Christ and show forth his integrity to the maximum. And this is what Zachary can never understand because his dichotomous in nature. And this is what exactly the failure on the part of this dichotomous person makes him a failure in the debate regarding my Lord's crucifixion. When he's not able to differentiate between the Israel and the church, when he's not able to differentiate between the Mosaic law and the law of Christ, what he can preach for us, what he can tell to us, and what he can claim that he has been really de de debated over the crucifixion of my Christ and he was proven wrong. In fact, he doesn't even know what exactly is the difference between science and the Bible. Far less he thinks he can understand. Because this person, he doesn't even know the pre triatic earth, which was the headquarters for Satan during the angelic conflict, where with the fall of Satan and the resultant angelic conflict led to the dissolution of the planet Earth. The earth became an empty waste land, which is called as in Hebrew, Tohi wa Bohu, and then there was no life in it as told in Genesis 1-2 1, and Isaiah 45-18 and Revelation 12-4. For an unknown time, the earth was covered by an ice pack, the ice pack being the result of the darkness freezing the waters because of the complete absence of heat as told in Genesis 1-2a. Neither science nor the Bible nor the Bible provides precise data for determining the age of the earth, methods such as carbon and radio metric dating for measuring geological ages are based on widely divergent and speculative interpretations of data which cannot be verified but bible provides precise data for determining the age of the earth if they could really look into the thing the purpose of the bible is to communicate god's plan and spiritual phenomena to mankind scripture alludes comments on what we classify scientific subjects as told in job 14 11 psalms 8 8 the infallibility of scripture extends to every subject touched on the bible and not just spiritual truth the bible was not designed to be scientific textbook actual scientific data recorded in the bible is limited but though it is 100 percent accurate there is no conflict which exists between the bible says in the original languages and the correct interpretation of natural phenomena by such sciences as cosmology biology geology astronomy chemistry 
anatomy and anthropology because there is no conflict because Bible is accurately recorded in the original languages of the scriptures. God originated and sustains all laws and all phenomena which science seeks to categorize and classify. Whenever scientific speculation contradicts the Bible, such speculation is 100% inaccurate. Whenever a conflict exists between scientific explanation or interpretation and what the Bible says, the Bible is always right. When a conflict arises between a historical interpretation and, the, and what the Bible says, the Bible is always right. In other words, where the Bible comments on science, science must agree with the Bible. The Bible is not required to agree with the science. That's what many of the people are failures to realize, far less these Zachariah things, that science and the Bible are not at all there. Because he says, science is always right because Bible is always wrong. That is also wrong. Because this person doesn't know what is science and what is Bible. Bible. He doesn't know what is angelic conflict. He doesn't know what is the revolt of all these things. Or he doesn't even know the scientific laws and the universe. What does he think he can tell to us about the crucifixion, the incarnation, or even as such the resurrection of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Because a dichotomy person can never understand the divine truth. It is only a trichotomous person can understand it. Until unless this person being controlled and guided by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn the truth, how can he realize the difference between the Mosaic law and the law? which my Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled on the cross and how is that we are not lawless but we are under a new law new law to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit but not, but, but not to grieve him but neither to squelch him but rather to walk in the spirit when we are in the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that when we are under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit we can understand this spiritual phenomena in depth in accuracy so that we shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set us free and tomorrow we shall continue these things about the scientific laws wherewith we can make a clear understanding to Zachary Mike to tell to him if you are a failure not to discern about the science and the science laws far less you can fail to tell far less you think you can tell about the Christianity about his crucifixion and about his incarnation about his divinity and deity because when you do not have proper understanding of scientific law towards Bible doctrine what the hell you can understand and tell about the incarnation or even as such the divination or even as such the crucifixion of my Lord because in your in your dichotomy nature you are soul being darkened with the age of the spirit of this world because of such many pastor teachers are occupying the pulpits even their minds have been darkened because of such kind of a preacher who doesn't know the importance of exegesis to put back into the into the pulpit but rather replace it with all such kind of assurance of theology that has been practiced in today's rotten hypocritical heretic apostasy of all time which the preachers are also changing their colors like chameleons wherewith they are not even honest to the fellow members of the church far less they could be faithful enough prepared to stand forth for lord like a drudge to show forth his glory when he has been ministered or been given that pain of a bona fide gift upon his shoulders to make each and every believer perfect and complete in the sight of bible doctrine so pastor rockadin failed in the debate even as such we have many people in today's christendom who are not even aware of this debate far less they think they're going weekly once to church and they're happy and week by week time is passing out month by month time is passing out year by year the time is passing out but they are not even having a foundation in the sure word of the lord which is bible doctrine to be taught from the original languages of the scripture so what you do with your time it is left to you but it is my duty to tell to you all what the best i can as long as i live in this world because it's my duty as an unprofitable slave to do that which has lord given to me because me being his born slave it is my work to show forth for you what is right and what is wrong no matter you accept it or reject it no matter you take it or allude me as a cult i don't mind but my duty is to tell the truth to walk two miles when my lord asked me to walk one mile wherewith we have been given this great heritage of bible doctrine into our hands to show forth to this dying and perishing world that this word alone shall reign forever and forever because his word is settled in heaven forever and forever so these last moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life in the privacy of their soul so that they could understand expressing evolution positive enough to say to God the Father that they believe upon their son Lord Jesus Christ who has been sent to this world who died a substitute spiritual death in the form of an anthropomorphism told for us metamorphically so that we can understand in a metamorphism so that we can understand that Lord Jesus Christ paid 
for us full on the cross, but by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, because he had you and you and me personally in mind when he went to the cross, so that whosoever believes upon him in the privacy of his soul, he can make a decision inaudibly, tell to God the Father that believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall have life eternal. And this is what Lord has given to us, the so great call privilege only to the believers of this dispensation of this church age, who have been called as Arlekhine Ketesis. And this church age believers, given this privilege of indwelling, controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the privacy of his priesthood, so that he can grow up for maximum glorification, because being the chemistry same between charcoal and the diamond, if you want to use the charcoal, to become for the same chemistry by not believing upon the Lord, it is left to you. If you want to use that same chemistry to become and shine forth like a diamond and a pearl in the sight of the Lord, that is also left to you. But the time is short. Do not waste your time. Put, make sure you are putting your foundation upon Holy Scripture from the Virgin language of the Scriptures so that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege that you have given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us and make it a source of blessing and challenge, not only to the unbelievers, even to the believers as well. When they listen to this tape, they could, believing upon the light of Jesus Christ, they shall be eternally saved. And to this extent, Father, we thank you for the wisdom and for the knowledge that you have given to us to preach forth and to give us a completed canon of Scripture written for us, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.